Uh, we've got a, a second question that uh, allows us to use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. So let's 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 try and, and, and look at this question. So we are told that a four kilogram box at point A above the horizontal is released and slides down three meters from point A to point B on a frictionless inclined plane. So a box is going to be released from point A. It's going to slide on the frictionless incline A to B. We are asked to use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of the box at point B. So let's do that. Now, please note that there's multiple things in physics that we hide in the statement. For example, for this question, you are told that the box is released. Now, when you release something, you are not exerting a force on that thing. When you release something, it's like, for example, if I was to let this marker go, I'm not applying any force on it. So I'm just letting it go, which means the initial velocity of that particular thing is always, always going to be zero if it's released. So very, very crucial information that is going to help us to enable to solve the questions that we want. So we are asked to use the conservation of mechanical energy, which mathematically for this situation, it would be the total mechanical energy from A to B in an isolated system. We know that the system is isolated because this is frictionless. So the total mechanical energy in an isolated system remains constant, which means Emac at point A is equal to Emac at point B. Very exciting stuff. Now, if you expand that, you find that you have half of MVI squared plus MGH initial is equal to half MVF squared plus MGH final. Very exciting stuff. Now, we want to know what is the initial height. Remember, the height in gravitational potential energy is just the height above the Earth's surface. So when I'm at A, what is my height above the Earth's surface? We are not interested in the distance of the slide. The distance of the slide, it's not going to give us the H that we want. However, we're interested in the height, which is the height above the Earth's surface. Now, let's try and see what's happening. If my initial velocity is zero, because the object is released, my initial velocity is zero, I'm happy with it. Also, my final height is when B, um, the four kilogram object is at B, and B is on the ground. So the height at B above the ground is just going to be zero. So the thing that I'm looking for is to know what is my initial height, which is this height there above the ground. Very interesting. Now, we are given the angle of the slope, which is 60 degrees, and the distance of the slide. So we can apply our trig ratios to help us find how high is A from the ground. So in extracting that, we are looking at a triangle that has 60 degrees there, that has 3 meters there, and it's a right-angled triangle. So I'm looking for the height, which is opposite 60 degrees, and I know the hypotenuse. You know from your trig ratios that if I've got the opposite side, which is going to be this guy, and the hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, I have to use the sine. So sine of 60 degrees is equal, the opposite side is H over the hypotenuse of 3. So what is my H going to be? The H is just going to be 3 sine of 60 degrees. If I apply my cross multiplication or multiply both sides by 1 over 3, I get my H to be 3 side 60. Sine 60, uh, H is equal to 3. So we type that in our calculator, 3 sine 60 is going to be equal equal to a height of 2.59 uh, 2.598 meters so now we've got our initial height we can apply that and put it in our conservation of mechanical energy so simplifying that remember this term is going to die off because our initial velocity is zero this term is also going to die off because our uh, final height is also zero so we are left with m GHI is equal to half MVF squared. Now, again, 
the mass dies off because we're talking about the same person so we didn't really need to know the mass of an object which is very crucial because this is a is, is, is a case similar to free fall now when you look at free fall we don't depend on the mass of the object anything that is in free fall if it's dropped maybe from the same height and uh, reaches the ground it's going to reach the ground with the same velocity regardless of how big it is or how small it is that is one of the things that makes this very beautiful so we don't need the mass we can just divide both sides by the mass because it's a common mass which gives us ghi is equals to half uh, vf squared now doubling everything we are left with 2ghi is equals to vf squared but we're looking for VF, so VF squared is going to be 2GHI. We take the square root on both sides, we are left with 2GHI, all in the square root. So what is our final velocity at V, or our final speed? We substitute square root of 2 into 9,8 into the initial height, which we just calculated there, which is going to be 2, uh, 598. All of that in the square root so what is our final velocity so the square root of 2 into 9,8 into 2,598 we get the final velocity at point B to be 7.14 7.14 meters per second very very exciting question but straight to the point because you just know that there is no friction so if there is no friction you can always rely on the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to make things easy for you